In the following tutorial we will cover the Mesh Browser and how to place objects into your scene. To get to the Mesh Browser you just click on the Mesh Browser icon. You are also able to search for any models within the editor. And here is a very useful tip for searching. If you type in the name of the object you are searching for you are presented with a set of models. And if you include an asterisk with the key search term that you are using you will widen your search to include many more objects within the editor. Placing objects into your scene is very simple. Uh, by selecting any of these objects that you see in your mesh browser, you're able to select them and just place them into your scene with a left mouse button. In your scene you will have grouped objects and individual objects. This is an individual object. Building right now, this is a grouped object, which means it is composed of many objects snapped together. Right mouse button click and open up the group. Now you are able to select individual objects inside the group. And if you want to close the group, just right mouse click and close the group. And it will go back into an individual selection. You are also able to add to the hierarchy of the group. So for example, if I have a table in here and I want this table to be a part of the grouped object of the building, if I double click on my table or any object, I'm able to parent to the set house. So if I cl select this, click OK, now every time I select either the table or the building, the table will be a part of that hierarchy. And if I want to remove any object from the selected group, you have to first open up the group double click go to parent and click on deselect if I want to center an object inside my viewport if I click on that object and I press the letter X on my keyboard it will center the object in my viewport in your toolbar you will have five different selection option types if I select an object and if I click on hide helpers it hides my helper selection box around an object also I'm able to hide selected objects and I am also able to hide unselected objects. If I want to bring everything back, just click on unhide all objects. By pressing S key or going up here and clicking on select objects, you're able to select your objects in your scene. You're also, as you work with your objects, you're able to lock your particular selection with a spacebar or going up here and clicking on locked object selection. You will be unable to select anything else except for the selected objects. Another great way to place objects inside the editor is to use impulse physics. So if I choose the suitcase and I position it right above the table, and if I click on the impulse physics here up in the tab, it creates physics and it places my objects into the scene. And you can use this for any objects inside the editor. Another important object attribute you want to take a look at is under objects tab you have shadow maps. You can turn on or off the shadow maps on the object and you can increase and decrease the distance at which shadows get rendered. My object right now is set to 3. If I turn it off, it's gone. And if I bump it up, and depending on the distance, I'm how far I'm, I'm away from the object, the shadow will be gone. So this is a good way to optimize your objects depending on the distance and how far the shadows get rendered. This will increase the speed and the frames per second of your map. You are also able to select multiple objects by clicking on one then pressing down control and adding to that selection. If you want to delete from a selection hold down alt and you're able to deselect from that specific selection. By selecting the object you're able to move that object along the specific axes by selecting three of the transformation methods here move it up, move it down, rotate on any specific axes and you're also able to resize and scale the object down or up. By choosing the world or the local axis with the local axis you're presented with much more control over that specific object. If you can't scale an object and you don't get those specific scaling points by going to view gizmo you're able to turn on and off, scale, rotate and move gizmo. You can also place and move your object within the editor by holding down the A on your keyboard and as you hold down A, left mouse button and click anywhere in the editor 
and it will place your object anywhere on the terrain. Also, if I want to select any objects that I have placed in my scene already, by going up to the object list, I'm presented with all the objects in my scene. And by double clicking, I'm able to select all the objects that I have already placed in my scene. By double clicking on a specific object, I will be given a object attribute property. And in here, I'm able to change the mesh name, I'm able to go through these tabs and check on and off specific attributes. So for example under skins I'm able to change any of the skins that are presented for that object. So I can change it to old, paint, and I can also change to any of the colors. Here's a little trick that you can do with skins. You can set any of these properties, click on the miscellaneous tab and under color you can reset to any of the color and it will take effect. Another very important attribute that I have under my object attributes is the class. By clicking on the class, I'm able to select and set types for my object. One thing I want to mention is not every object will be able to handle every single class. One thing that I want to have this table be set as, as a physics object. So when I walk up to it, it'll be able to move and react to the player. So by setting the mask to Lawman ASP and ASP stands for Actor Single Physics. Click on OK. Now we can see that our class changed to Lawman ASP. If you click on the Fields tab, you can set specific physics properties, including mass, along with other options for that particular object. So you can set how different this object will react when the player interacts with it. Now you're also able to duplicate an entire group or individual objects. So by holding down shift and then dragging the object, it will duplicate that object. You have a make copy selection box come up. You can set a number of copies and duplications that you want that object to have. You can name the selection and then you can attach to uh, original parent. I'm going to click OK to everything that I have selected. I'm also able to, by opening up the group, duplicate individual objects within that group. And by doing that, they will stay attached to the group itself. I want to briefly cover snapping and if you go to control you're able to see that we have snap objects clicked on. You can only snap objects if you have if the objects have hook points and the way you get to see hook points is by going to a render and clicking on option you can see that control render hooks click them on and now you can see that all these hooks that means the object will be able to snap to those hooks. So by taking the roof and moving it out of the way, and if I want to snap the object back to its original location, by selecting this and moving it down, you can see that it's not snapping. That is because under controls we have our snapped object turned off. By clicking this on, you'll be presented with snap properties. Set distance, click OK. Now if I select the object and I come close enough to the top, it'll snap to the rooftop. And the last thing I want to cover is layers. By going under view, layers, you're able to set specific objects to a particular layer and what that does it just organizes your scene. You can turn on and off and set selection type, being able to select it or not select specific things that are set on the layer. The default layer is main. You cannot delete the layer main but you can delete every other types. Every time you place an object into your scene, it gets placed into your main layer unless you set it beforehand. So let's create a new layer. By clicking on that Create New Layer tab, we're able to select a new name. So let's set this name to Buildings. You can delete the layer, you can edit, you can rename it, and you can move it up into in, on the hierarchy. So if we place a new building inside and we click on Buildings, the new building will be placed on a building's layer. So now you can see if I turn this off or if I set it to selectable and editable. If I want to change where a specific object is placed on which layer by double clicking you can see that it's set on layer and I'm able to choose a different layer type. So if I want to place these buildings on a building's layer by double clicking I'm able to select the layer and place them under buildings. And if I want to delete buildings, all the buildings that are on that layer will disappear as well. 
you're also able to create sublayers within layers. So let me create a layer called Objects. And let me create another two layers. One is Table and the other one is Crate. I'm also going to place the objects in those specific layers. Now, if I hold down control and I take this layer and I drag it over the objects layer, it creates sub layers. And then I can do the same thing for the crate. So now I'm able to have objects layer and sub layers within the main layer.